Okay guys, welcome back to Bad Luck Garage. I was gonna take a little break tonight and not do a video, but I came out here, I was piddling with the car because the spark plug wires came in that I ordered uh, to try to get to work with the eBay turbo headers. I finally figured out a solution. I wanted to share it with you guys. So I thought I'd do a quick little video and, uh, and give you an update, uh, show you what I did. Problem is solved. <laughs> So I'm gonna give you this update, show you what I did, and give you the part number of the spark plug wires that I used. So these were the original spark plug wires that I ordered. I've used them a lot. Uh, the Street Thunder. Uh, these are pretty much the bottom, bottom level Taylor wires, but they're still better than the factory wires, guys. They have a lower resistance than the factory wires. Uh, we've been over this before. Uh, I like these wires. They're a great budget wire. That's the bottom line. Uh, this is the part number. This is for, you know, for the trucks, 51046. Now, the problem we had is with our up and over turbo headers, the wires were so long, they were bulging out, and, you know, they were just all over the headers. Obviously, they would have melted. Uh, even using heat sleeves on them, they were just being pressed so hard against the header, I was afraid they would eventually burn even through the heat sleeves. I tried to space the rails up, but in order to get the rails spaced up far enough to stretch the wires out straight where they wouldn't be touching the headers anymore, I ran into the problem where I was hitting the fuel pressure regulator and my fuel lines and everything over here on the driver's side. So what did I do? I ordered the exact same wires, but for a Corvette slash Camaro application. These wires are, I think, two and three quarter inches shorter than the truck wires, and they are part number 51045. And uh, these wires, you can find them on eBay for like $35 shipped. Uh, I'll actually, I'll put a, uh, an eBay link in the description of this video. So, I got these wires, even being, you know, almost three inches shorter than the truck wires, they were still too long, but... They were short enough that it allowed me to space my rails up. And you can see now, I have, let me turn this light on. There is plenty of clearance now. Even on this very first one here, on uh, number one on this side, and, or I'm sorry, number two on that side, And number one on this side, we are good to go. Uh, the wires are just taut enough that they're not touching. I'm just gonna try to show you from all angles, guys. Like, these wires are not touching. They've got plenty of clearance around these headers on both sides of the car. You can see that. Um, yeah, so all I did was I, I plugged all the wires in and I made these little spacers here. Uh, I'm gonna insert a picture of the spacers I made. So the spacers are a diamond shape because you've got your, your coil mounting bolts that mount the coils to the factory bracket. And you know they need to go in between those bolts back here, so that's why they're shaped like diamonds. Um, I could give you the measurements between this hole and this hole, and it's not a straight line. As you can see, the bracket kind of bends up a little bit, and it's that way on both sides. But uh, yeah, guys, this is a great solution because it, it serves two purposes. Number one, it moves the coils up about two inches and you know gets them away from the heat that's gonna be coming off these turbo headers. And number two, it gives you, you know, plenty of space you can see I can, I can get my finger between the header and the wire there um i'm 100 percent confident with it being like this i'm still going to wrap these headers but you know there's really no need for uh you know for heat sleeves on the wires now although you could use them i mean i'm not going to tell you not to you know wrap these and use the heat shield you're twice as good to go but uh it's totally unnecessary now since there's plenty of room there. Now these brackets, the way I made them is, I just took some scrap metal I had laying around. Uh, I drilled a hole in it. 
I mounted this to the two bolts that I wanted to use to mount my coils. And then, like I said, I plugged the wires in and I held the coil up until the boots were taut enough that, um, you know, that they would clear the headers and not be touching the headers anymore, but still had just enough play in them to where, you know, they wouldn't be, have a lot of tension on them and be popping off the wires or popping off the coils. Um, that's it, guys. I mean, that's, that's your solution right there. So, you know, I held them up there. I marked my second hole, and this is what I had. I then transferred that to a piece of metal, which in this case was actually the backside. Remember, we used the PCM, the factory PCM out of this Camaro to make a, uh, a bracket to mount the Holly PCM in the factory position. Well, this is the backside of the factory PCM case, and you know, this is what I made my brackets out of. I just cut pieces of this out, cut them into that diamond shape that you saw. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Now it should be noted, depending on what kind of coils you're using, your spacing will be a little bit different than mine. Like the square uh, truck coils, they actually, like their bracket and everything comes down at a different, you know, it's just, it's different, guys. The spacing's different. So you may end up having to move it up less or, or maybe move it up a little more than I did. But, you know, if you want to know the spacing between the holes in the brackets I made from the center of hole, uh, center of the hole to the center of the hole is about, well, it's almost exactly one and a half inches. So essentially we spaced the bracket up one and a half inches. Um, we got the coils away from the heat. We got wires that fit now. And, you know, we don't have to relocate the coils under on the frame or anything like that. They're in a good position and, you know, it almost looks factory. <laughs> Matter of fact, if I if I painted those little brackets I made black, you you wouldn't even know that I'd done anything. They're just hovering slightly above the fuel rails there. Oh, and one more thing, guys. I keep telling you how there's just all kinds of room how easy it is to get to the spark plugs from underneath the car with these headers. So there you go. Like you can, can you see? Like right there, spark plug, spark plug, spark plug. It's kind of hard to get it, but it's, I mean, you can see all the room. I mean, the spark plugs are just right out in the open from underneath. That's, this is on the passenger side. You go over here to the driver's side, it's, it's even better. I mean, look, like, look at all this room. Like I can seriously change the plugs or the wires or whatever from under the car here, no problem. Once I go to a tubular K member, there's, I mean, there's gonna be even more room. So, uh, you know, those of you who were like, man, I bet it's hell to change the plugs with those headers. Nah, guys, I mean, it's, it's easy. <laughs> you know, if the car's on ramps or on blocks like this, yeah, piece of cake. And that's why I said in the video where I showed you guys how, you know, me changing them from up top a while back. Uh, that's why I said I would do it from underneath, but it'd be cheating because it's just, it's just too freaking easy from under the car. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I told you when I figured out a solution, uh, I would let you know about it. That's my solution. So once again, thanks for watching. I hope this information helped you guys out. Now get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.